So as promised, here's my good friend Clay from his channel Pantherology. As the name suggests, he covers the Carolina Panthers. Clay, how are you doing today? Let you introduce yourself. What's going on, guys? So my name's Clay, and my channel is uh, Pantherology. So I cover the Carolina Panthers. Uh, I've been doing it for about a month or two now. So just getting acclimated with the, you know, with the YouTube going, you know. But other than that, I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself, Ryan? Doing well, man. And and I I feel your pain as far as getting used to the YouTube game goes. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a lot of wrinkles to kind of kink out at first. But once For you sure. get going, man, it, it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, as you're aware, there, there's, there was a few Dallas Cowboys players that were former Panthers. Now we can just say there was a couple as uh, yeah. one just got cut today. So, I'll, I'll yeah. get to the elephant in the room in a little mm -hmm. while. But first – I want to talk about Daryl Worley, who's a defensive back. He's played safety before in the league as well, but he was kind of picked up as a depth piece. And I know he was drafted by the Panthers. I want to say in the third round, he was, he was in Carolina for a couple of years. I think he got picked up by the Eagles and, and had a little run in with the law, got cut by the Eagles, was in Oakland for a couple of years. And uh, I, I think he's had his best couple of seasons the past two years. Um, he's got to start a lot of games, but not somebody I necessarily know a lot about. So uh, I'll let you speak on that a little. Yeah, so Worley joined with the Raiders uh, free in the free agency about 2018. Um, and thanks to, I think, his willingness to play overall, you know, the, the secondary from outside corner to the slot to the free safety. I mean, he's 6'1", 215. Uh, he's only 25 years old. He's only w missed one game in the last season, which was with a neck injury in like week 15 of, I think it was 2019. And he's had like an interception, a fumble recovery, eight pass defenses and like 58 tackles, 51 tackles solo. Um, and then, you know, he signed with the Raiders after Philadelphia, the whole Philadelphia thing you know, released him after being arrested due to the team facility. Yeah, I, I didn't get the details on that. Yeah, but it he, looked like he kind of had a confrontation <laughs> with a with a cop, and it didn't go well. I I don't know. If, no, well, I mean, I don't know if he was drunk or what, but they said that he fell asleep near the team's facility when he let when he was allegedly found passed out inside his oh, vehicle, man. blocking a highway. So I don't know how you do that. Yikes. Um, but he was the third round pick. We picked him in the third round in the 2016 draft. He's out of West Virginia. Um, and his career though, he's had about five interceptions. Um, you know, but the thing about Dallas is Dallas hasn't had a cornerback with more than three interceptions in a season since Terrence Newman, who had four in 2011. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a really good point. And that's something that we definitely made it, uh, a big statement we wanted to go after in this offseason we went after Mike Nolan a defensive coordinator to cause more turnovers give Absolutely. more different looks to the to the offense and now I'm kind of forgetting who said it the other day but they were kind of speaking to I think it might have been like Jordan Lewis or somebody but he was speaking to how and, and maybe it wasn't Jordan Lewis but anyway he, he kind of talked about how Jason Garrett was ran a defense and, and Marinelli where it was kind of predictable and it wasn't necessarily always a bad thing because we had such good personnel, but now we're not really going to know what's coming. The other team's not going to know what's coming. I mean, and. Yeah. I mean, you know, with him, it's kind of like up in the air. I mean, obviously though, like he, like he did at the Raiders and, you know, John, John Gruden elaborated on him, like how he can play in so many different positions. The, you know, and he has the willingness to play. The question is, is, you know, how how good is he? Has, you know, who has he been given that right amount of chance? You know what I mean? Like, is he going to sure. come in and automatically start? Is he going to make the cut? Who knows? But the fact that he has the willingness to play and can play all these different positions, I think, mm -hmm. kind of puts him in that, like, where he might work out well with the Cowboys – and granted, you know, the Raiders aren't the best team to think that you're going to get developed very well right now. I mean, they're they're still rebuilding. They got they're very young, just like we are. Uh, and then y'all have more of that coaching staff that obviously I feel like could develop players more just because they're, I guess the word is more experienced. 
Okay, sure. So w- one thing I wanted to mention from training camp, th- this was from the first day. I-, I haven't really seen anything since, but we had Chidobe Awuzie starting on the left side, and we had Anthony Brown starting on the right side. We had Jordan Lewis starting in the slot, which I think is perfect for him. Mm-hmm. Um because uh, I know Anthony Brown spent some time in the slot in the past as well, but Trayvon mm-hmm. Diggs, our rookie out of Alabama, he's starting mm-hmm. on the or he's the backup on the right side right now for Anthony Brown, and then the left side backup would be Daryl Worley right now. So it, it's interesting because typically you'd have the, a four game preseason, and a guy like Worley would get a ton of play time. I want to point out we also have fourth round pick out of Tulsa, Reggie Robinson, who can play corner and safety. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a fight for that fifth spot, I think, on the depth chart. Yeah, for sure. Um, if, if if I'd like to see Worley do good because the knowing the fact that he can play those di- so many different positions or can play more than just one position he's actually very versatile and i think that in this league when you can be versatile you can play safety you can play slot you can play corner you can be kind of put wherever or middle linebacker it's like a isaiah simmons you know you can kind of play all those things in this league that's big yeah and it's something we've really preached the whole offseason is is position versatility um one name we'll mention later can play both defensive tackle and defensive end, and that might be Gerald McCoy, but we're not going to have him this season. Another one, Tyrone Crawford, and it looks like we now have a couple corners who can also play some safety. So, yeah. so that's interesting. I have a couple notes I want to pull up on, on Daryl Worley on my phone here. Um, let's see what I said. So you mentioned he had the 58 combined tackles. I, I put it, that was fourth on the team. Yep. Um, he, had, he was tied for second on the Raiders last year with eight pass breakups. And he's only 25 years old. You also mentioned that. Uh, you mentioned he was 6'1", 215. I, I didn't know yeah. how big he was. That, that's a pretty yeah. decent-sized corner. So that suggests sure. that he definitely can play in the mm-hmm. slot and potentially at safety some more. Right. Um, yeah, I put free stays, safety. The only other thing I wanted to say was the only free agents with the, the same amount or more pass breakups as Daryl Worley last season – that are under the age of 30 are Logan Ryan and Prince Amakamura. Mm -hmm. So he was actually a pretty big free agent as far as defensive back depth is is considered, in my opinion. Right, right. That's that's some good points there. So now Um, I want to get to – go ahead. uh, No, you're good. Okay, now I want to get to Don Terry Poe. Okay. Um, So I think he played a lot of of his career in Buffalo, right? Uh, from what I know of, yes, but most of his career was in Buffalo. Um, and, and so I should get Danny's opinion on him as well, but, uh, probably, but I know he spent the last couple of years in, uh, in Carolina, big dude is like six, three, three fifty. And as a Dallas fan, like that, that's the kind of guy we've been needing is, is just a big old nose tackle to fill up the center and, and stuff the run. Now I know that, Carolina hasn't had the best rush defense in the league. As a matter of fact, they were one of the worst last year. Mm-hmm. I do want to point out that um, that y'all's pass rush last year probably wasn't the best. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had Demarcus Lawrence, Robert Quinn. This year we have Demarcus Lawrence, Everson Griffin, Alden Smith, and I hope Randy Gregory. But the the jury's still out if he'll get reinstated. But um. Kind of want to hear from you what what you think we can expect from Don Terry Poe. We have a lot of depth at the position, but obviously losing the one guy we're going to talk about next that that that's going to hurt us. Let's see your thoughts. Um, I mean Don Perry, Don, God, Don Terry Poe. I mean is obviously I mean he's a massive dude, you know. And the key stats for him, he's played eleven game, you know, the games he had twenty two tackles. Four, and then four sacks. I mean, the guy can obviously play. He's not. He's not like. He's not like the big defenders that you hear about. But he can still play. I think that you know the thing that you have to think about is he. He is in you know coming off an injury. Um. So yeah, you know he's coming off a quadricep injury. Um. And then he passes physical and he's back. So that's the thing you have to think about. He 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 he's a key force along the interior of your defensive line. The question is for y'all and for him, how good is he going to come back after a quadricep injury? So he had a quad injury too then. Yes. And it's a, so I did see on, on the depth chart from last year, he was on the IR. How, I mean, how much did he play last year? Did, did he play at all? 
he had 11 he played 11 games last year he had 22 okay, so tackles he and he season. had four sacks okay so he played yeah. most of the season I, i'm assuming he's mostly a, a run stuffer but but if you said four sacks then he is somewhat of a, of a pass rusher oh yeah he can get in there he's i mean he's a big boy he's just that he he you know he can get in there he's just more that guy who stuffs the line for you gotcha and and yeah and he still isn't off the pup as far as i know um he wasn't on monday anyways actually so hopefully he, actually he he actually that announced that that actually just got announced uh, around 7 30 tonight that he got off the pup okay so he should be returning to practice then yes so yes, that's good to hear um because you know as far as returning veterans tyron crawford who was injured last year he's he's coming back he can play on the inside outside yeah. I, I was kind of talking about position versatility earlier um Antoine Woods is another guy returning from last year so we do mm-hmm. have guys we can rotate Tristan Hill was just a second round pick last year Neville mm-hmm. Gallimore what a third round pick this year so yep. so we have a lot of depth at that position not necessarily any great starters but I would say Don Terry Poe is definitely the, the biggest dude on the on the roster possibly oh yeah I mean he's 6'3 246 it's just he's a massive dude yeah huge guy so um Last thing I want to get to, or not the last thing, but no, next thing I want to get to is the, the elephant in the room, Gerald McCoy. Uh, the, the bad news today is, is he, had, he got cut, yep. um, it, you know, off the injury reserve. So I, I got the notes on this. He was released with an injury waiver. And, and I guess because he had a pre-existing condition with his quad before he yeah, signed he already had a quadri- he already had a quadricep mm-hmm. injury, I think, from us. Mm-hmm. And so before he ruptured his quad with us, he had that pre-existing condition. So I guess that allowed for the injury waiver. I'm not too sure how that works. Um, we have to pay his bonus. I think we owe him three million this year, two million next year. But at the same time, we we did owe him sixteen or eighteen million over three years, so six million a year. So we're going to get off the tab of a decent amount of money with that. I don't think we plan on signing a defensive tackle as of now. We'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Um, I did read the team has interest in bringing him back next year, just depending on how his rehab goes. Yeah, I mean, quadriceps injuries are very – I mean, they're not easy. So Yeah, so it, it, it sucks, man. It sucks as a Cowboys fan, but it also just a fan of the player. I hate it for him. I don't well, know if you remember when – defense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it went from defensive tackle really being a, a strength for once, in my opinion, to, you know – it. It could be okay, but it could definitely be a weakness of the team. Um, what I wanted I to elaborate you... on, what I wanted to elaborate on with him and losing him is that mm-hmm. the connection that him and Don Perry, you know, Don Terry Poe have, like from playing with Carolina. So having that chemistry could have helped that defensive line and that interior a lot. Yeah, that's very true. They have built um, chemistry through Carolina. It it, mm-hmm. it sucks, man. There, there's yeah. no good way to put it. I don't no. know if you remember. The Buccaneers were on, and I think it was when Dirk Cutter was the coach, were on Hard Knocks a few years ago. And that's when Gerald McCoy was like in his prime. He was like 28 years old. And the yeah. dude's just a stud, man. He's just the hardest worker on there. Great athlete, great personality, just an mm-hmm. overall leader, man. Mm-hmm. I, I hate to ask you, but like, what, what, what is it like having a healthy Gerald McCoy on the team? I mean, the guys, the guys is the best was our best defensive tackle on on the team last year I mean the guy put up great numbers last year and and when you lose a guy who's experienced um and can play and just is a but he's an I think he's an an all a pro bowler for sure defensive tackle when he's in his when he's in his zone when he is healthy he is a he's a Pro Bowl for sure. And I think so when you lose like a guy like that, with the fact that Dallas already has, I feel like maybe some troubles on the defensive side of the ball already. And you lose a guy like that, and then you've already added all these offseason moves. Um and also to help out Demarcus Ware. You know Marcus Lawrence. The, Lawrence. Sorry, Demarcus yeah. Lawrence. Thank you. Thank I mean, you. I wish we still had Demarcus. Lawrence. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I meant Demarcus Lawrence. You know what I yeah. meant. But I mean, you know, when when you ha- if you think about it, if you had to have them two together, fully healthy, I mean, that's a that's a combo. Yeah, sure. You know, I, I hate that he's thirty three years old having another big injury like this. Yeah. Um, 
I really do hope he, he can recover from it and come back and, and still be, if he's a fraction of the player he once was, then I think it's going to be hard because of his age. It's going to be yeah, harder for him absolutely. to heal a lot. They, they definitely like said it, in the NFL, it's a tougher, a ruptured quad is a tougher in, injury um, due to his age and his yep. size. It's a tougher injury. However, due to his athleticism, that kind of gives him somewhat of an advantage. For, in recovering for from sure. It. But I think, Don, I think with adding Don, you know, when you add these guys like y'all got, like when you added, uh, oh my gosh, let me get my notes here because I was I had this going. So like when you added guys like you added Everson Griffin, yeah, you know, and then yeah, you that, that was a big pickup, and um, and I think it's it, even now it's bigger than ever with with yeah. McCoy being out. And then you so you have him, and then you have Don uh, Don Terry Poe, then you got D Law, then you got Alden Smith, you know. And then you and then you said t- talking about Randy Gregory, who said maybe Randy Gregory. And, Why and, is there maybe by his name? Because the NFL just hasn't followed up and re- reinstated him. Um, right. As you know, the the NFLPA it's it's a new rule where they can't be suspended for testing positive for THC. Right. Um, so the rules kind of set up for guys like Josh Gordon and Randy Gregory. Mm-hmm. Now, Gregory's apparently d- done rehab, and he's had a couple slip-ups, but he's doing pretty much the right things, and, and he's just waiting to hear. But he's been waiting for months. He's reached out to the, the attorney on the N- for the NFLPA. He said he's having a hard time communicating with him to communicate with Roger Goodell. I, I think some of it has to do with Roger Goodell and Jerry Jones having the fallout they had. Um, so, you know, he should be reinstated, but he probably should have already been reinstated when they changed that rule. Yeah. Um, that's unfortunate for y'all. I mean, if he, I mean, I hope he gets, I mean, for y'all, for y'all's hope, I hope he gets, you know, reinstated, but for sure, if he doesn't, when you still have D law, Don, per- Don Terry Poe, and you got, mm-hmm. you know, Griffin, um, and all, and I, I still think Alden Smith is still a solid let me tell you, yes. man, hadn't played a snap in five years. He comes in first day of training camp and, and goes toe-to-toe with Tyron Smith, and they called it a draw. <laughs> so, so, I mean – th- There you so, go, man. He's a so bad he's dude. Obviously st- so, he obviously can still play. So, then you got these guys that are experienced. So, I think that's going to definitely help you on that side of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. The, and the so, experience um, and the professionalism goes a long way with, with that group. Yeah, no doubt. There, there, there's a lot of experience on that they – a lot of guys come from some really good teams, like Everson Griffin. He he's competed. Mm-hmm. In, I want to say they made the NFC Championship. So yeah, in, in when Minnesota, they beat, yeah. Um, when they when Stephon Diggs had that big catch against sure, the Saints. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so they played some big games, yeah. and uh, now I'm gonna get to a question I, I asked Danny. Now I'm gonna ask yeah. you. First, sure. I want to hear what do you think is the biggest strength of the Cowboys? position wise going into the 2020 season well i mean it's that's an easy question the strength obviously is I'm not even just gonna say like your offense or whatever like or your defense or whatever like i'm gonna get i'm gonna give you a position cool I, obviously as a dallas fan and you know this and as a mm-hmm. fanfare favorite it's y'all's receivers it's unquestionably your receivers yeah i, yeah. I think that's a very fair answer and so, as far as that, you know, I think probably there – I mean, when you have Amari Cooper and you got Michael Gallup and then you get C.D. Lamb, you know, you get you get all these guys. You got – and then you got these guys. And do you, do you also have um, Randall Cobb? No, so he went to Houston. Okay. So – so, but you still got those three guys right there, and then who's backing those three up? Yeah, gosh, I got, we have so many guys on on the roster right now. I I, I can look it up. We got Ventrell Bryant, I think Noah Brown still on the roster. Uh, Devin Smith from Ohio State still on the okay. roster. Let me, right. let me look at the the depth I chart. Even... I I know Tavon Austin walked. I think he just signed in maybe for the Forty ers Maybe. But I mean, those three, those three guys. I mean, just right there is just immaculate. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll touch on that in a second. Definitely want to get to a good old Wikipedia. I'll save the day here. So we got <laughs> Noah Brown, as I mentioned, Ventrell Bryant. Uh, we know about Cooper and Gallup. John Vay Johnson. He wears 
TO's number 81. He's actually pretty fast. Uh, don't know a ton about him. Tevin Jones, I believe, is a rookie. Mm-hmm. 6'2", 225 out of Memphis, undrafted. Okay. And uh, obviously CD. Aaron yeah. Parker. Okay. Cedric Wilson Jr. is the guy I was forgetting out of Boise State. He, okay. He's a 6'3", 210, can play in the slot. And he hadn't impressed me too much yet, but hopefully he'll be getting more opportunities. Well, it's just with the thing about your wide receiver group is so ver- – it's the, the versatility. Again, mm. it's all about the versatility in this league. It, it doesn't matter what position you play. The ver- It's just like you could put C.D. Lamb in the slot, but then you could put C.D. Lamb go downfield, you know, or mm. you could put Amari Cooper in the slot, or you can put Amari Cooper downfield. You can put yeah. – uh, Gallup in the slot. They, they're, these guys can do basically anything a wide receiver needs to be able to do. Yeah. And then you know, you, last year you had Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper with a thousand yards, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, absolutely. So my McCarthy was talking about it today. Michael Gallup was a thousand yard receiver in, in his second season with Dallas last year. He's only the third Dallas Cowboy to ever do that. The other one is Bob Hayes, Hall of Famer, and Drew Pearson, a soon to be Hall of Famer. So that, that kind of says a lot. And he and McCarthy thinks that Gallup's ready to take it to the next level this season. So whatever that could possibly even mean, especially with the addition of uh, C.D. Lamb. I don't necessarily think guys will have more yards, more touchdowns as far as a guy like Gallup goes, but he might be just a little more efficient. Yeah. Um, less drops. As, as far as your – yeah, I mean, as far as your wide receivers, man, y'all are just – y'all are just – solid there you don't have to worry about it and i think dak's gonna have a uh, a solid year you know it's just all about putting everything together with just with the new coaching group yeah no doubt um i also think running back is going to be a big receiver position there's going to be a lot of receptions ppr leagues are going to love tony pollard i think there's going to be a lot of two back sets with him and ezekiel elliott yep yep and uh so so now i gotta know what what's our biggest weakness from your perspective I mean, as lo- as far as I'm concerned and from what I've seen, the least amount of hype that I've seen from y'all is your secondary. Okay, um, so, yeah. So, I, I, I want to say Danny said the th- same thing. So, the secondary is somewhat unproven, untested, considering Byron Jones was was our guy last year. Now, you know, Wuzier's played plenty. Anthony Brown's played plenty. We saw a lot of good things from Jordan Lewis, but he, he didn't start in the slot as much as I would have liked him to due to – he just wasn't the kind of guy Chris Richard liked playing. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I could go, I could go on and on about your secondary, but like another thing is like I think another group that you have to particularly look at for y'all too. And I'm going to go back to offensive side mm-hmm. is your tight ends. You yeah, know, your tight ends are not that you know they're not that great. I mean, Blake Jarwin, he's he, you know he he's here and there. He's hit or miss. He he shines one minute, the next minute he could do something like he'll, he'll drop a pass or something and then you got Blake Bell and Dalton Schultz so I mean they're these guys I, I don't know how much experience they have and I think Blake Jarwin's what coming in his third season or second season so third I believe um I, I will say that it's a very untested group right especially Dalton right. Schultz and Blake Bell who was with the Chiefs last year but I think it was third on the depth chart and when you're behind a guy like Travis Kelsey you're just not going to get a lot of balls thrown your way um, Blake Jarlin's the one guy, in my opinion, that has some real breakout potential because for a tight end, super athletic, he's quick, right. he's a home run threat. And that's something we haven't really had at tight end in a, in a long time. Not that Jason Wynn didn't get his fair share of touchdowns. He got open, yeah. but he wasn't explosive like, like a guy like Jarlin. And I think another thing for me is not not even about your tight ends. Like I think another thing that y'all might be struggling with, uh, and it's just because it's been a roller coaster for y'all, Mm-hmm. Is your linebackers because like your twenty in twenty eighteen? Think about it, y'all were on. It seemed like y'all were on the way up, and then the twenty nineteen just came crashing back down onto y'all. Yeah, it, it was a rough year, and you know it's another year where we're going in with Sean Lee probably as a starter on on the weak side. Um, the one thing I did want to mention a linebacker is, and I'm struggling for names, Jalen Smith. And who's the star? Van Der Esch are switching spots. So Van Der Esch is going to be in the middle now as more of a pass coverage linebacker. And we're yeah. going to use Jalen Smith at times as a, as a pass rusher on certain blitzes. 
and just using his raw natural athleticism more. I, I think Van Der Esch is, is really good in pass coverage, so I think he'll fit that middle linebacker position a lot better. I mean, for me on your bat defensive side of the ball, I think your best groups for y'all is your defensive line and your safeties. Yeah, I, I agree. Defensive end for sure. And, uh -huh. you know, safety will be interesting to see. Uh, ha Ha Clinton Dix was, was a solid player for a lot of years in Green Bay, yep. and it'll be interesting to see how, how he – Shows up in Dallas, plays under he, a familiar coach. Didn't he take a year off or something? Or like, yeah, I, I really d can't think of it. I, he definitely missed a season. I don't know if point, it was injury or he just took a year off. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and look that up. He, he um, definitely missed a year. But I do want to get elaborate on your on your linebackers. I don't think your linebackers are bad because they're certainly very good. It's just that the fact that like. One minute, you know, it seemed like, you know, like I said, the 2018, they were on their way up. Mm -hmm. And then just 2019 just went right back down. Yeah. And, and I think part of that was playing Jalen Smith in pass coverage. You know, he he's, was just finally fully recovered from that drop foot injury he had a couple of years ago. That, that took him, what, a year, well over a year to, to fully recover from. So I, I think it was kind of – asking too much of him to be the pass coverage linebacker. He runs real great north-south, not so great side-to-side. -side. So I, I think switching the positions, that that could definitely help us out, putting those two guys in more of their natural position. And hopefully Sean Lee stays healthy. And then I wanted to elaborate on your cornerbacks. I just feel like – so like Trayvon Diggs and Reggie Robinson mm -hmm. II seem to be like – show some level of hope for you all. Mm -hmm. and excitement because – but, you know, reality is is that they're rookies. And yeah. then you got Chidobo and Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis, who will probably most likely be doing most of the work there. Um, they haven't had the highest success before, but maybe now they can start coming into their own. Um, I just think that maybe Trayvon Dix and Reggie Robinson might be y'all's future. Yeah, I really think Trayvon Diggs – in an ideal world to me, he'll step up and be starting over an Anthony Brown or hopefully Chidabe Awuzie steps up as a starter because I we drafted him to be a starter. I think it was a second-round pick a couple of years That's ago. That's a hell of a name. Um, Anthony Brown, I want to see more of his depth. It is. So it's Chidabe Awuzie. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten so much. Like, even there's like – like Not Chidobo, our, yeah. Yeah, like there's players on our team that, you know, I, I don't even – like – I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I, you know, I got a video coming out about Kawan Short, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing oh, it yeah. right, Kawan. Kawan, like, like Kawhi. Yeah, yeah, like I don't I, know. I would, I would guess it's Kawan. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there, there was somebody on Danny's uh, episode the other day. I was watching with you. Yeah. That, that you didn't know how to pronounce their name. It was, oh, a weird it name. was like it was one of the linebackers. It was like Epidate or something. And, yeah, dude. And, yeah. and Danny said he, the first time he ever, you know, put it, point, you know, said his name, like he got mm -hmm. some hack for it. So I, I don't know. I might get some. Yeah, hack that, that's a tough name some to names. say. Some, sometimes I get it wrong. Uh, I've definitely learned through over the past couple of years, Chidobe Awuzie. Yeah. Um, so hopefully he'll start. Hopefully at some point Trayvon Diggs will, will take over that right side at defensive back. Yeah, I, I really like Jordan Lewis in the slot, man. He, he's a good ta – he's the best tackler on the team. Yeah, it and, should uh, be an exciting year for y'all. I think, to be honest with you, the NFL in general is going to be an exciting year for everybody. I think, you know, uh, you know, with us, with the new coaching staff and a whole mm -hmm. new basically offense, and then y'all got a whole new coaching staff, and then the offseason add-ons that y'all have got, it's just going to be an interesting year for everybody. Um, yeah. It's like kind of like the NFL is up in the air, really. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel the same way. Um, I, I can't wait to go on your channel and talk about the Panthers and how, how much they've changed pretty drastically from one year to next. So I think to be honest be with you, I think to be honest with you, the drastic changes I actually are, are looking forward to. And I think sure. that they're actually more positive changes. And, and, and uh, let's just say we got some drama out of there that need, need to be there anymore. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, I, I can't wait to talk about that. Clay, before I let you go, do me a favor and uh, just give me a wild guess, uh, the Cowboys' prediction for our final record this season. Um, I mean, from what I know of and from what I saw on your schedule, your, your schedule is pretty – I mean, it's your division is kind of up in the air. So, it's like mm -hmm. 
are the Eagles are the Eagles going to, you know, you know, are the Eagles going to be able to put everything together? And is Ertz going to be is is I mean not Ertz, but is Wentz going to stay healthy? You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, you know, you you, you open up the season with the Rams, right? So you open up the season with the Rams in Rams, LA at the uh, new stadium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're at the Rams. Um, you know, and I'm looking at your schedule and I'm going through and I'm going through and you got, so like, I think the Rams is a win for y'all. I got you beating the Falcons as well. I think the Seahawks is going to be tough. Like Seahawks are very good. It's every year that that, that team is just a solid, solid team all around. Yeah. Like, so um, I'm going to so, go and say you're cheating. If you're looking at the schedule, you just got to give me a, a prediction off the dome. <laughs> a prediction off the dome. Yeah. Um, you gotta give me a, let me look at your schedule real quick though. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want to hear with the talent on the team without knowing who we play. Assume we just have an average. I think with the fact that you, you the, everything with the off season, you know, with the off season moves and the and the, the things that y'all have done mm-hmm. with with the team on the offensive side, and you get CD Lamb, and you, like we were talking about Gallup, and you got Zeke, you got Pollard, you got and you and you got Amari Cooper. So it's like you've got there's nothing real in your offensive line and so it's like there's no there's no holes there on the offense to be honest with you i think y'all have probably the second best i probably think y'all have like the second best offense Mm -hmm. in the league um because i mean i'm gonna put kansas city for their first obviously be just because it's kansas city on the super bowl right so it's like I, I would say that that they're they're probably y'all are probably second. So I'm gonna say just because your division, I'm gonna put y'all first, and you're gonna win yeah. the division. And I think I I think I said the same thing on on Danny's channel, and I see that kind of y'all being like almost a Buffalo Bills, but mm. obviously more offensive. I think it's gonna be like a ten and six, eleven and five season. Okay, I, th- I think my scenario. guess, I think my guess was twelve and four, which is which is a very reaching like positive guess for me you you know well, you, me pretty well i'm usually pretty negative about them i mean i predicted a nine and seven season this season and and that's oh. like the best case scenario and i think the worst case scenario for us is seven and nine so it's backwards yeah. so, so it's like so it's like i think y'all are just the, the thing that is questionable for y'all and mm-hmm. and and it's gonna, like I said, it's it's the, the linebackers and it's your your, your secondaries. The, the, that's where you might struggle. You're gonna put points on the board. It's just like Danny yep. said, and I and I believe it too. Even even when I think about your offense, you're all gonna put points on the board. That's no problem. The fact of the matter is, is is it gonna be enough? Because teams might be able to put points, put the same amount of points on you. You see what I'm yep. saying? So. So absolutely, you, we we have if, a new coaching staff on defense, so it, it's going to take time to get acclimated with with all the guys. Yeah, I wasn't re- prepared for the the, the prediction. No, I know, I, I know. We I threw, I threw you, I threw you a little curveball. <laughs> so I'm going to say ten and six, eleven and five, cool. first play, first place in the division. I'll put and I'll probably put the Eagles second, Giants third. Okay. Um, the Washington, Washington football team. Yeah, the Washington football team. But to be honest with you, man, I kind of like the Giants this year. I kind of yeah, think you know. I like the Giants. I like the I like the Washington football team as well. <laughs> I think that I, I think to make, be honest with you, you, won't be I won't be shocked if the Giants make the second in y'all's division. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a toss up, man. I really do think the NFC East is a toss up. I think we're clearly the most talented team in it, but from yes. there, I, I think it's a toss up. Um, Clay, I really appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, yeah, hopefully, we'll have you back me. again soon, and uh, hopefully, sure. I'll get on your channel pretty soon. Yeah, we'll definitely plan that out. Um, I appreciate you having me on. I um, I'm glad we were able to do this. Um, anytime, anytime you want to talk about some Dallas or Cowboys or anybody in general, I'm open to it. Cool. So that that's Pantherology, guys. Clay, if you want to just plug your Twitter, Instagram, any of that, real quick, feel free. Yeah. So my my Twitter is I think it's Claymation eight four three on there on Twitter. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure that my Instagram, I actually might have to look at it cause I've changed my Instagram so many times. I think it's Ropstar 92. 
So, um, and then of course, if you want to look me up on YouTube, it's Pantherology. Uh, people have hard time spelling it, I think. So, but I'm gonna spell it out for y'all real quick. It's P A N T H E R O L O G Y. I think people forget the R in there before the ology. Sure. Cool. Well, that's Pantherology, guys. Definitely go follow, subscribe him, like his videos, and and check him out, man. He, he's good. Good Panthers fan. I, I like your content, man. I'll watch all your videos. And that's pretty much going to be it, guys. We're out. Peace.